Hi guys, I'm Sandra and in this video we will show you the Creality Sermon D1 3D printer. So if you want to know more, then stay tuned. Hi guys, welcome back. My name is Rui and this is the Rui Raptor YouTube channel. If you want to help us out, you can by giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also help by joining our Patreon page or by clicking on any of the affiliate links posted below in the video description. Hi guys, welcome back! Today we will share more details about this new printer, but first let's start with the unboxing. At the top, we have the acrylic doors. Next, we have a couple of acrylic panels. And under those, one more acrylic panel. Next are the four vertical metal profiles. And the two Z axis profiles. Next, we have a small filament spool, the filament spool holder, a little box, the user manual, and the top of the printer. At the bottom, we can find the print bed and the base of the printer. The manual looks very complete and with lots of information. Inside the little box we have the second half of the spool holder, filament guide, several screws, a spare nozzle, a roll of painter's tape, the power cord, more screws, the corner pieces, a memory card, a tube with grease, some tools, zip ties and a spatula. And this is everything that came inside the package. This is the base of the printer, and at the front we have the color touch display. There's also a sticker on it with some of the printer's specs. To access the electronics, we need to remove the bottom panel. In total, there are 9 screws that we need to remove to open the panel. Under this small vent is a cooling fan used to cool down the drivers. So you need to be careful when taking out the panel and disconnect the fan cable. Here we can see the back of the display and next to it the memory card slot and the USB extension from the board. This is the main board. It's a 32-bit Creality 4.3.1 equipped with TMC's 2208 drivers for the X and Y axis. Both USB and memory card slot have extension cables connected. As usual, with the Creality printers, the wires connected to the green screw-type connectors don't have ferrules on them, and worse than that, the tips are tin with solder. On all our videos, we recommend to fix this and crimp these wires with ferrules instead, for a better and safer electrical connection. And here is the power supply. The Sermon is equipped with a 24 volts and 14.6 amps power supply. On both sides, there are two stepper motors. These are the Z-axis motors. As for the print surface, this printer comes with a glass bed. The glass is secured with clamps and can be easily removed. The print bed is made from aluminum and comes installed on the Z-axis platform. Underneath, we can see the insulation pad. And finally, the top of the printer. Here is where we have the X and Y axis and also the print head. Although this printer has a cube shape, it's not a core XY printer. Here at the side is the Z axis and stop switch. As you can see, our printer came with this switch already broken. This is actually something that many users reported also. 
which probably means that it gets damaged while being packed. If you have the same issue, you have two choices. Get a replacement from Creality or get a compatible switch from a local electronics store and solder the wires. The Y-axis stepper motor is not directly connected to the main belt like the X-axis motor. It has a small belt connecting the motor to the rod that drives the main belt. And this is the print head. It's a direct drive setup equipped with a metal extruder and PTFE lined heat break. To cool the hot end, there's a very small fan. This fan is only 30 by 30 millimeters. For layer cooling, there's a nice size fan at the side. The print head moves on linear rods. At the side, there's a big connector to connect all the print head wires. Ok, so let's start with the assembly. For the first step, we need the base of the printer and the four vertical profiles. These will be installed on the four corners. Each profile has a label with a number and the orientation. The first one is installed at the front left, then the second, third and fourth. To secure them, you need the M6 by 35 screws and washers. Next are the Z-axis profiles, which are installed at these side slots. They also have labels with the left or right identification and the orientation. To secure them, you need the round head M4x14 screws. Before moving to the next step, check the motor couplers. Our couplers were installed too far down on the motor's shaft, so we had to adjust them. Also, on our printer, one of the motor shafts was completely bent. When this happens, you need to replace the entire stepper motor. To do that, you need to open the bottom panel and remove the four screws from the top side. Ok, moving on. Next is the print bed. Keep the glass clamps facing forward and slide the platform on the Z-axis profiles. Next, get the two lead screws and insert them in the lead screw nuts and then in the couplers. Then tighten the coupler screws. Next is the top of the printer. There are slots on the sides and this is where the Z-axis profiles will attach to. Now we can take the remaining M6 by 35 screws and washers and secure the top piece to the corner profiles. You might need to push the corner profiles so they align with the top piece. For the next step, you need the round head M4 by 14 screws and use them to secure the top side of the Z-axis profiles. If your Z-axis end stop arrived broken and you have a replacement, you need to remove the two screws and remove the remains of the damaged one and install the new one like this. If you got a compatible switch instead, you can use the original wires and solder them on the new switch. 
Now that we have the Z-axis profile secured at the bottom and at the top, we can adjust the wheels grip on the print bed platform. On each side you have four wheels, but only two of them can be adjusted. The grip adjustment is done by turning the eccentric nuts located on these two wheels. We have a video explaining in detail how to correctly do this adjustment, so check in the video description below for the link. For the corners, you have these plastic pieces. These pieces must be aligned with the metal profile. Next is the filament guide. The guide must be installed on the top piece and on the back right side. And finally is the spool holder. First, we assemble these two pieces. And then we install it on the back right corner profile using a couple of M5 by 8 screws. Now we can connect the cables. First is the big one located at the right side. Make sure it's inserted all the way in. Next to it is one for the filament runout sensor. This one can only be connected after the side panel is installed. At the left side there is a small connector. This one has latches to lock it in place. And at the back there are a couple of connectors for the heat bed. Use some of the zip ties to secure the cables to the profiles. Creality also included this PTFE connector. This was meant to be used as a filament guide and secured with zip ties to the print head cable. Next are the side panels. These are the left and right panels. They are secured with M4 by 8 screws all around. The right side one has the filament runout sensor attached and an opening for the spool holder. Be careful not to over tighten these screws or you will crack the acrylic. And this is the back panel. It has an opening for the input voltage connector and switch. Finally, the two doors. These are secure with flat head M4 by 8 screws. The hinges are tightened to the side profiles. With the doors installed, we can now remove the protection sheet. Now that we have the side panel installed, we can connect the filament runout sensor. Last but not least is the glass bed. And the printer is now assembled. The announced print volume is 280 by 260 by 310 millimeters. Now we can connect the power cord and turn on the printer. On the main screen we have three menus we can choose. At the bottom left we have the nozzle temperature reading and the nozzle set temperature. And at the right is the heat bed temperature reading and the heat bed set temperature. In settings, we have the leveling menu that is used to level the bed. Next is the refuel button. In this menu, we can push or pull filament. In the move button, we can move each axis in 10, 1 or 0.1 mm steps. We can also home all the axes and read each axis coordinates. In motor control, we can disable all the stepper motors. In the language button, we can change the language. And in the printer info, we can see the machine type, firmware version and printing size. 
In temp, we can control the nozzle and heat pad temperatures. In automatic, we choose between PLA or ABS to preheat the nozzle and heat pad. In manual, we can define the temperatures we want. The cooling button will turn off the heaters. And in fan, we can turn the layer cooling fan on and off. And finally, the print menu is where we select the files we want to print. OK, before we can start the first print, we need to level the bed. So, heat up the bed up to 60 degrees C. When the temperature has been reached, enter the leveling menu. The printer will then run the home sequence. Once the home sequence is complete, check the nozzle height. If you see the nozzle lower than the bed, like this, turn the four leveling knobs to lower the bed. This will prevent the bed from hitting the nozzle and forcing the print head during the leveling sequence. The middle point we will leave for last, so start with the first corner. With a 0.1 mm thick piece of paper, we have to adjust the leveling knobs until we feel the nozzle touch the paper. Then, we do the same for the second corner. This needs to be done on all corners and as many times as needed until they are all at the same height. With all four corners leveled, we can check the center. If the glass is perfectly flat, it should be OK. In our case, our glass is nicely flat. Now we are ready to run the first prints. Don't miss our follow-up video where we will show you all the test prints and the review of this printer. And that's it you guys, thanks for watching. We will see you guys next time. Bye!